everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here and uh, today it's turned hot again and uh, I haven't had my air conditioning installed yet uh, so it's a bit warm and I've had to have the door shut because the kitten can't be allowed free roam outside so it's all got a bit steamy in here and the reason I'm mentioning this is that um, the camera that I'm using is a phone, that is to say an iPhone, and um, it's the latest one from Apple and um, it is very sensitive to the heat. I thought I was sensitive to the heat but nothing compared to this. This phone has got so many bad habits when it comes to the heat. So um, it sits there and, and suddenly the screen goes dark and I don't know if anyone else has had this problem with this particular phone. Um, but anyway, so I'm worried that you might find that you can't see the picture as well as you should have been able to. So um, anyway, just to let you know that it's not me being incompetent, it's Apple. I shouldn't say that, should I? They won't like me for that. But anyway, I mean, it takes lovely video. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, really happy with the phone, but it doesn't like the hot weather. No doubt about that. So anyway, I'm working in my Viviva uh, sketchbook that I received from them free, gratis and with no charge a little while ago. And I'm just putting some washi tape around the outside edge uh, in case I sort of Bit close to the edge and I don't really want to spoil that. Um, just a quick look at what we've done in here so far since we got it. Um, my very first picture that I painted in here was this one, the five little birds which we did with the water brush and with the remnants of this palette here, which I haven't touched since I did that as you can see. And um, so this painting has been very popular on uh, YouTube so I'm very happy about that I'm very pleased and thank you very much for watching it everybody I think it's I don't know it's our second biggest seller so far <laughs> not bad um, anyway so I then after that I did this which was some sea glass and um, then I did this with some shells and most of these have been turned into videos um, tutorials and things and then I did this which is definitely a tutorial uh, relaxation, just a kind of, um, what do you call it, icebreaker, no, a warm-up, warm-up, that's it. And then some more sea glass, a little bit of lavender, and um, I did this landscape. These are all vid um, tutorials that you can follow. And now we're up to here, and I can't make up my mind what to do today. I've been practicing, been playing around, and I can't make up my mind. In my practice sketchbook, I've got these birds, which are too dark, I don't like that. And I've got these, which are too strong, and I don't really want to do that. And this is the last one we did of birds, and obviously I don't want to do that. And I've got this, this is a magazine, um, RSPB, that's the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. And it's got lots of lovely pictures in it, actually. Of Oh, wow, look at that. Um, of birds. There's a beautiful blue tit. We ought to do that sometime. And owl. It's always good to work from original photographs of things, really, or at least to at least know what birds look like. Oh, he's nice. Full raven. Hmm. All right, moving on. Oh, look at that butterfly. Yes, that's a. What is that? Peacock. That's a peacock butterfly. Yes. Red Admiral, we've got loads of those here. Am I feeling inspired yet? We did one like this not long ago with the thistle and um, a bee and also a butterfly. So there's a there is a video up, a tutorial on how to do a butterfly or a moth um, and a thistle flower 
if you want to do something like that. We've done that, almost exactly that. And uh, I've got a video too of how to paint um, a fawn, um, one that I did a few months ago, which you might be interested in. With two robins on a branch. I'm, I'm sort of tending back towards that. I think I'm going to do a couple of robins on a branch, but we might stand them that way rather than that way. So, so let's do that. Let us do something like that, shall we? Let's put um, a branch in. And then probably a good idea to sit down. Oops. Okay, so let's have him with his tail up because that's kind of perky. And then this one, just don't make the body too long. You have to be ready with the eraser to get rid of your superfluous lines, of course, because you will obviously make lots of erroneous marks. And you have to kind of feel your way into the drawing. But if you don't want to draw, then you can go to my website, dianeanton.com, and you can download my outline sketches which will give you a hand if you just really want to be practicing your painting which is perfectly reasonable when you put the eye in though make sure you put it fairly close to the beak because otherwise the bird looks a bit strange it's much cuter if the eye is near to the beak so we've got a sticky up tail the bottom is fairly straight and then we're going to put the wing out here like that. Okay, so there's the bird. Shall we try and fit three on here? We have a uh, second one, I think. Shall we? I've got some other examples. It's one standing up. Yeah, see that one's that's that's very similar to that. Slightly different angle. Oh, there we are. That's what I wanted. That's straight on. Now he's got his mouth open. Now that might be interesting. He's thinking about being fed. And the eyes quite close together. and the head quite flat. I'm going to start again. Okay, what I see here when I'm looking properly, first of all, I'm going to start with the legs. Sometimes I find it's easier to start with the legs because it gives the bird something to stand on. And so we've got the legs and the tail and then the body. And what I've got here, I see in this photo, is a kind of bowl like that with a little bit of fluff coming out at the side. And then basically, it's a triangle. So that's the top of the head. And then it just comes out like that. And then he's got, it must be a chick, it's got its mouth wide open. And then the eyes by the side of the mouth. So we're going to call that a chick. And then 
we want another one. And this one is standing a bit further up on the branch and she is mummy or daddy. I'm going to be trying to feed this monster, they both are. A bit of food in the mouth there. Too big, eye too big, make smaller, and lower. There we are, that's better, isn't it? Okie dokie. So now we need to think about how we're going to paint these. And um, I did think it was interesting that the ones that we did like this were really popular because they were all just one color. And maybe we'll stick with that. Perhaps we'll just make up nature to suit ourselves and just paint them one color, but in different layers, like I did last time. It's quite good to be able to practice your layering. So, um, my exhausted palette and my um, Curis Curitake uh, water pen, water pen, water brush, water brush, water brush, my piece of recycled towel to act as a brush cleaning unit. Very sophisticated, works perfectly, costs nothing. The brush has seen a lot of use since I first introduced it to you uh, about three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Uh, three weeks at least actually, now I come to think of it. See how the color has darkened of the um, bristles, but it doesn't matter. When it's new, this is a new one, a bigger one, it's white but obviously it's going to pick up some of the dye from the paint, especially if I use the Viviva ones, these color sheets, because that's very powerful dye in there. But in any case, it doesn't matter because it's just, um, it's just the bristles that are stained and that won't affect the paint that we pick up. So let's get started and um, let's think what we're going to do here. What colors are we going to do? Well, that's not such a difficult question to answer if we stick with the same sort of thing that we did before, which is to take one color and paint the bird in that. Um, so let's imagine the first one is going to be a sort of um, greenish yellow. Make the chick kind of greenish yellow underneath. And I'm not painting it wet in wet this time. Last time we did wet the bird and I painted into wet. This time I'm just going to do an undercoat of one color and then come in with another color similar that to that um, but brighter let's say um, so now we're dropping in some orange And I think I'm going to uh, um, probably uh, let me think. Um, I don't know. It's one of those days, isn't it? 
You can tell it's one of those days. I need to make my mind up. I'm gonna leave him for a minute and we'll go to the pale green one. Let's do this one in light green. Cerulean blue, still got a little bit left. And now I'm just adding some brighter blue along the top, top line of the bird and into his tail, just to let that bleed. I just, I'm not really um, controlling the amount of water particularly, I'm just picking up water from uh, paint from the, from the palette in a reasonably dry brush. Um, okay, so then the legs. If I put a light pink and then we're going to have to come in with something a bit darker than that. We need a brown, a little bit of light brown. I'm not very happy with that. So, I don't really know whether I can lift that out on this paper and with this paint, we'll see. Let me see if I can lift any of that out because I think he's gone a bit too bright. He looks like a chick, you know, from the hen. This is useful to know and I don't, I'm not embarrassed to say sometimes I don't like what I do. First time round, sometimes you think, oh yes, but then you do it and you think, oh no. So that's better. That's a bit better and we'll see what happens when that dries. And then the other one on the other side, I now feel as if I want to do her. Oh, there's a loose hair, right. Do this one in pink. And a um, little bit more pink will drop in on the top line. That's just a little bit of um, raw umber, raw sienna for the beak, and then the same little bit of raw sienna for the branch that they're standing on. So we put the raw sienna in first, and then come in with something a little bit darker. So we mix a bit of green with a bit of that, and then just put a bit of shadow along the bottom. let that bleed and then we want to put the eyes in so lots of different choices as to how to do the eyes quite often if they're going to be small I quite like to do them with a, a pen and what I do is I just go around in a circle and try to leave a little bit of light in it in the eye And then we can just 
emphasize the beak a little bit. And then finishing touch really for a little sketch like this is to come in now with your pen and just put in some sketchy marks. Something as small as this really benefits from having a little bit of line added. When it's completely dry, you can take out any um, pencil lines that show. I forgot his tail. Come back and do that in a sec. Um, okay, let's just uh, do that. Make his tail a little bit yellowish green. Because I'm going to add some green to this ridiculously bright yellow chick. And then this one, I'm going to, I've got some food in her mouth. Okay, and uh, oh yes, mustn't forget his tail. Let that dry and see whether anything else needs to be done to it. Now I'm going, oh, it's completely dry and I'm going to come in with some little touches of extra color. to liven it up a little bit. You can see that when the transparent yellow goes over the blue, it gives you a sort of green. Um, and then uh, not quite sure what to do about this one in the middle here. Um, We'll make him a little bit fluffy around the edges like that. And we'll give Dad a little bit more. Uh, in the way of feathers. Mum. She's very neat and tidy. A 
few little touches like making the top of their legs a little bit wider where they meet their body. That's kind of quite a good idea. I'm going to put a little dot of white in his eye, in the baby. I'm use my, hopefully this will work. I think we've managed to keep the expression. And I want to make this branch a little bit darker in places. Here we are. I'm not going to do any spatter on this, I don't think. I'm quite happy to leave that like that. But I do want to rub out the um, pencil. So I'm going to give that a blast and rub that out. So there we are, there's the final painting. I have added um, a couple of leaves down here and I'll tell you why I did that because I accidentally dropped a a drop of um, pink on there which I couldn't get rid of so I had to cover it up somehow so I just drew those in after I'd finished the rest of it and um, yes so it's done and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy having a go at this one too I don't think you'll find it terribly difficult it'll be a sketch of the birds on the website so if you pop over to dianenton.com you'll be able to download it free of charge um, and uh, the other thing I want to mention just briefly is the membership, the channel membership, which we've just started. And if you want to support the channel, it's the easiest way for you to do that. Uh, you can just sign up and you can um, get various different kinds of perks. You've got a private Facebook group and all sorts of free things that we're going to be adding um, onto our offerings so that uh, you can become a closer part of the family of uh, watercolorists that we're trying to build here. So I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself very well today. It's been a hot, humid, sticky, yucky day and lots of interruptions, but um, I've done my best. There'll be a video up tonight and um, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope to see you here again soon tomorrow, hopefully for some more painting. So I'll say goodbye for now and I'll see you again soon. Bye everyone. Bye bye.